When, where and how? Introduction History is the study of the past, particularly the written record of the human race. History is about what people did and how they lived in the past, more generally including scientific and archaeological discoveries about the past. Social history is an area of historical study considered by some social scientists. The word history comes from the Greek word histo which means know this and historio which means learn by enquiry. History can be defined in many ways but it always studies the life of great men, events, cultures and civilizations that relate to religion, art, architecture, literature and philosophy. History is not limited to the study of the life of mighty kings and the battles they fought. It also tries to find out how ordinary people got their food in the past, when and how they learned to grow food and domesticate animals, how they discovered fire, etc. In history, we learn how human beings have interacted with the elements of nature to create rich cultures and civilizations. It tries to understand and explain events of past by examining a variety of related factors. Besides kings and statesmen, we also study about the lives of ordinary people, their society, religion, culture, goals and aspirations. Why should we study history? History teaches us about the past. It consists of events that occurred in the past. The study of the past is important to understand the events of the present as history is a continuous story of one event leading to another, the present cannot be understood without an understanding of the past. To know and fully understand the world we live in, we have to be aware of its history. The study of history answers many questions that are important to us. History is also important because we learn many lessons from it. By its study, there is a lesser chance of repeating the mistakes made by our ancestors. Thus, we can make better decisions in the present and for the future. History teaches us how harmful and destructive wars can be and how a small band of united people can defeat a much stronger enemy. In history, we learn about the teachings of great men and women such as the Buddha, Guru Nanak, Mirabai and many others. We may follow their teachings in our daily lives. This makes us better human beings. It helps society to function better. History also helps us learn about the culture of the people in other countries. Thus, we can understand them better. It makes us more tolerant and open-minded about other people and their cultures. Importance of History The study of history has got a special importance of its own. Some of the important points about it are It enables us to gain knowledge about great kings, statesmen as well as lifestyle and culture of ordinary people. It enables us to find solutions to our current problems in a better way. It gives us the knowledge of origin and evolution of different languages and dialects. It teaches a big lesson to the man that slavery, racial discrimination, hunger, poverty illiteracy, etc. are the evils of our society and we need to eradicate them. History helps us to remember about our past glory and keeps it preserved. We can realize that study of the past is so closely knit into the present that we cannot ignore it. Time frame in history In history, knowledge of the dates of the past events give an idea of their correct sequence. By this, we can learn about the progress of events more clearly. Chronology of past events by BC and AD time scale. In history, we find dates with the letters BC or AD written after them. The full form of BC is before Christ. The full form of AD is Anno Domini. Anno Domini is a Latin word which means in the year of our Lord. The dates followed by the letters BC go backwards. Sometimes CE, Common Era and BCE, Before Common Era are also used in place of AD 
and BC respectively. If we add circa with any date, it means that such a date is an approximate date and is not exact. The historians divide past into two broad periods, prehistory and history. Prehistory Prehistory is the study of events that happened before the humans learned to write. So, no written records of that period are available. This period is referred to as the Stone Age. To understand the life of the prehistoric man, historians and anthropologists study about bones, tools, weapons, ornaments, cave dwellings and cave paintings made by our ancestors. History The period for which Written records are available is known as history. It is generally studied under three heads, ancient, medieval and modern history. The written records provide details such as dates, events, names of people and places and so on. The geographical framework. It had a great impact on human society since ancient times. There is a close relationship between the physical conditions and historical phenomena. In fact, History without geography is incomplete. The geographical divisions of India are the Himalayas. The Himalayas have been a great barrier against reaching India. Their existence did not allow any invader to have a dream of conquering the northern regions beyond the Himalayas. The northwestern ranges are not very high, which allowed many foreign invaders to invade India through low-lying points called passes. The Indo-Gangetic Plains The richness of the soil facilitated the establishment of big empires like those of the Mauryas, the Guptas and the Mughals. The Deccan Plateau The Vindhya range stands between the north and the south. South India remained under the influence of the Dravidian culture even when the Aryan influence extended widely over the north. It enabled the growth of several regional kingdoms here like those of Cholas, the Chalukyas and the Rashtrakutas. The Coastal Plains The long coastline has enabled India to maintain trade relations with the faraway countries since the very ancient times. The vast size of the country is divided into many regions by rivers, mountains, deserts and forests. India has fertile valleys and arid deserts. There are snow-clad mountains and regions with scorching heat of the sun. The country has all the three main climates and also records the world's highest rainfall. From cultural point of view, there are many cultures in India, but in spite of these diversities, there is a deep underlying unity. Sources of History To know history, we should know and study the evidences and records of our past. These evidences and records are known as the major source material or sources of the history. Major sources of knowing the past may be divided into two categories, archaeological and literary sources. Archaeological sources The study of the remains of the human life in the past is called archaeology. The remains of ancient buildings, inscriptions, coins and artefacts are called archaeological sources of history. A person who studies about the remains of the past is called an archaeologist. With the passage of time, the remains of ancient civilizations got buried under the earth. These remains were dug out by the archaeologists who collected and examined human-made objects like tools, ornaments, weapons, toys and pottery. Inscriptions The written records engraved on pillars, rocks, cave walls, walls of forts, Palaces, on clay and copper plates, etc. are known as inscriptions. The earliest of inscriptions were found on the sites of Harappan civilization. The inscriptions provide us with the information about the kings, administrations, kingdoms, etc. The process of reading and understanding the script used in inscriptions is known as decipherment and study of inscriptions is called epigraphy. The Allahabad Pillar inscriptions present a feature of the character and conquests of King Samudragupta. The Iron Pillar inscriptions at Mehroli in Delhi give us information about Chandragupta and Vikramaditya. Coins The study of coins is called numismatics. Coins provide a good deal of information about the past. Historians use the information found on coins 
to counter check facts they provide information about the rulers who issued them the period of their reign and the social and economic conditions of their time indian coins found in foreign lands and foreign coins found in india indicate that there was trade between india and other countries coins contain the year of minting the ruler and the time period and so it is easy to know about the past monuments monuments are old buildings of historical importance temples forts palaces stupas and residential complexes are some categories of monuments which make the past come alive they provide us with clues about the period in which they were built they give information about people their social life their religious beliefs and their culture etc the stupas of sanchi madhya pradesh and the caves of ajanta and elora maharashtra tell us a lot about art and religion of contemporary india artifacts people in the past made many things such as tools weapons pottery sculptures toys coins jewelry paintings and artifacts these artifacts help us to get information about the cultural skill and artistic life of the civilizations literary sources the written records of the past are called manuscripts these are available on a variety of surfaces such as palm leaves the bark of the birch tree and later on paper the literary source materials may be divided into two classes religious secular religious literature writings on religious themes come under religious literature these writings like the vedas of the hindus the pitakas of the buddhists and the angas of the jains help us to understand the religious beliefs and traditions of the time the four vedas are the rigveda the samveda the yajurveda and the atharva veda out of the four vedas the rigveda is the most ancient and gives a lot of information regarding the history and the political system of the aryans next to the vedas the two great epics the ramayana and the mahabharata are the most famous books in sanskrit literature the ramayana was written by maharshi valmiki and the mahabharata was written by maharshi vedavyasa the tripitakas the jataka kathas and the gita and puranas are rich sources of ancient historical information secular literature a literature that is not religious is known as secular literature secular literature includes poetry drama memoirs chronicles travelogues and accounts of foreign travelers accounts of foreign travelers the chinese pilgrims like fa hain huan sang and is singh visited india in search of knowledge and buddhist literature and left valuable accounts about the religions social and political conditions of india huan sang is called the prince of pilgrims the tibetan historian tarnath gives us a lot of valuable information about buddhism Al Biruni visited India during the time of Muhammad of Ghazni. He has left us with a remarkable book called Tehqeeq e Hind. Accounts of these foreign travelers have proved vital in the reconstruction of the history of India for the period AD 400 to 700. Travelogues. We get a lot of useful information from the writings of foreigners. Herodotus tells us about the political condition of northwest India. in his time aryan wrote a detailed account of the invasion of india by alexander skylax wrote a book which contains a detailed account of his voyage between the indus and the persian gulf it also gives a good deal of incidental information about india three ambassadors were sent by greek rulers to patliputra present day patna their names were megasthenes dimachus and Dionysius Megasthenes was sent by Seleucus to the court of Chandragupta Maurya the name of his book is Indica Dimachus was sent by the Syrian court to Bindusara Chronicles the Arthashastra of Kautilya contains a lot of information regarding the system of administration and the social and religious life of the Mauryan period the Mudra Rakshas of Vishakha Dat 
gives a story of Chandragupta Maurya and Chanakya, Patanjali's Mahabhasya and Panini's Ashtadhyayi are works on Sanskrit grammar. The dramas of Kalidasa, Abhigyan Shakuntalam, Meghadutam and Malvika Nimitram throw light on the social life of this age. Prithvi Raj Raso, written by Chand Bardai, gives us information about Prithvi Raj Chauhan and similarly Raj Tarangini of Kalhana and N. A. Akbari or Akbar Nama of Abul Fazal are very useful literary sources of history.